Empower Youth Week Masterclass. Be inspired, be connected, be transformed. Greetings. This is a masterclass on young people occupying space in the field of law. Before I begin, I really would like to um, say a short prayer um, in giving acknowledgement, thanksgiving, and praise to the spirits that own the land that we live in and acknowledging that we fully belong in this land and we draw ourselves and our being from that gift. As we proceed then to deal with what the space is for young people in the field of law and uh, legal technology. I'd like to um, just start off by presenting the agenda, the contents of this uh, talk, and then move on to um, just going into the essence of it. So to start with, I'll present um, myself, who I am, Louisa Zondo is the name, but I'll present the essence as well. Two is the law and legal technology landscape. And the third item would be available opportunities within the sector going into uh, the best practices uh, in the industry, as well as looking at how young people can navigate through the, um, the field and make themselves um, fully uh, successful and uh, sustainable in, in, in their practice. So about myself, um, basically you can see from the, um, the screen uh, a, brief, a brief bio of um, what I have done, where I have been and where I am um, at, at the moment as a lawyer. But there is a backstory to it, which I just want to um, uh, share with, with yourselves. As a young person growing up in, in Guamashu, um, I um, was in a very, very uh, tiny family unit, three of us as siblings, two sisters, and mother and father. Quite a, a nuclear uh, family setting very um, uh, restricted and, and, and enclosed in, in being. But I always had the sense that I actually am here to make a difference, to help. I have recently been to my uh, former high school, which was a boarding school, during speech day, and they had extracted the letter that I had written as part of my application, and it said I wanted to become a lawyer because I want to help people. So sometimes, even when we are not aware of it, things in life position us and show us where we belong, what we must do, and if sometimes we follow that, it actually does become the truth. So. What is this legal landscape? I just want to start here where I um, share the view that law is required in all facets of life, which means that when we ordinarily see law as brought up by legal practitioners who are defending matters in court, that's just but a small aspect of what law and the fields of law are about. You would find that even in a space of um, arts, uh, entertainment, recreation, there is a lot of law that is applicable there. Um, it may be law that relates to the contracts that people sign in order to enter into those arrangements that make them to perform and to, to sell and propagate their, their produce. But there is also a lot of law that just defines 
the landscape in which they operate. So across our lives, whether you're thinking of even water, there is law that governs water, and therefore there are legal practitioners who are reviewing, um, applying, uh, arguing uh, changes uh, that must apply in respect of water law. So just, just take this understanding that there is no aspect of life that doesn't require law. When I come to then the issue of technology, what, what role does technology uh, uh, play in all of this? This is a, an enormous field and it is evolving and evolving very fast. It used to be that um, technology would necessarily be used uh, for those things that tend to be mundane, regular th th things that are done in any field if it's a law firm and a, 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 a legal practice, whether it's an advocate's practice or an attorney's practice, uh, whether it's in a university setting, teaching law, or in an organization, um, technology would probably be used to deal with those things that uh, deliver uh, services um, in areas where there are repetitions and where there is need to um, streamline um, services and, and activities. But today, technology plays a huge role in law, whatever facet of law one is in. Because there's even argument, and some of us do, uh, find uh, it raising palpitations. There's even argument that because technology has moved so much and is able to deliver so much in every field of, of, of law, there is this concern that comes up very often that there will come soon a time when the person who is a lawyer is actually replaced by technology, and that legal services would effectively be delivered without the human's um, participation in it. I personally think um, that is not really uh, going to be coming up soon because there's so much nuance that uh, needs to be uh, delivered by the mind of a human reasoning around the specificities of any particular um, matter. So uh, we, we humans uh, remain uh, of, of relevance. Um, even though I must say that that setup where all those law books, those law reports that you would see on the bookshelves of the lawyer, uh, giving confidence that this is an, a, a place of information, um, no longer are the pillar of the lawyer's uh, success. Uh, technology is widely, widely used in all aspects. COVID itself has delivered new dynamics where even access to courts, relating to courts, filing of uh, a documentation is done electronically. So indeed, technology plays a huge role in the evolution of um, the field of law. Now, about available opportunities for young people um, in, in, in law, I, I think this is a, an, a very important um, a subject, simply because many of us black people find ourselves without a reference point. We don't know where to start. We, in many instances, are the first ones in our families to go into uh, tertiary studies, and it becomes very difficult to navigate the terrain. What do I do in order to become an attorney? What do I do in order to become an advocate? What do I do in order to become a teacher of law in, in, in universities? What do I do in order to become a, an, an, an organization person and work in a particular field um, as, as a legally qualified uh, person in uh, th th that f field. How, how do I equip myself with the knowledge to do this? My advice 
to young people grappling with this huge question is, once you have a sense that you actually would like to go into the field of law, whether it's real and fully explored or not, once we have a sense that this is something you'd like to do, my advice is start with a generalist approach. Do the bachelor's. You may take the bachelor's with law, or you may take just a bachelor's with an expanse of social um, uh, sciences that will deepen your ability to think analytically, deepen your ability to uh, write in a way that is clearly communicative, clearly analytical, and reaches the, um, the points that you w wish to, to make most effectively. Explore language and history so that you have a sense of who you are yourself as you go into exploring what the career is that you would like to uh, lead uh, life with. I think once you have um, gotten the experience of participating in the engagement with social sciences through a bachelor's degree, you actually can move on to shape your path uh, or your different pathways towards um, the, 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 the career in law that may be good for you. You, you will be able to identify those aspects that you really like, the things that you know you do not like, even though you may have to engage with them, but it's good to know that what you do not like because you want to motivate yourself. So you'll concentrate on the things that bring you up and you will make sure you get the good um, uh, spirit, the good uh, uh, energy from doing the things that you like, and that will enable you to grapple even with those that you do not like in an effective way. So I think uh, study opportunities exist. There are challenges that we all know. Fees Must Fall in South Africa uh, is a movement that highlighted deeply to everybody uh, what the challenges are of learning um, in uh, tertiary um, institutions within South Africa. And it inspired the world, I must say, uh, for them to also look at themselves and how they grapple with um, exclusion and access to, 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 to education. Um, we know, therefore, that challenges of access, challenges of resourcing are huge. How do we, to, how do we overcome them? There is so much that is available, such as the connection to others, building networks, making sure that you are able to tap on those uh, formations, even within the universities, that are targeting assistance in various ways uh, to, to students. Some are independent, some are really emerging from the universities themselves. So the confidence of understanding, researching and understanding what is available to help me nav navigate the cost issues around education, the um, understanding of my um, pathways to a particular outcome, um, access to accommodation, all of those things are about building networks, connecting yourself to information, researching, um, what you need to know and, and, mo and moving forward. There, there are huge challenges. Uh, that I will admit, and I will say here that anybody who actually um, puts across the idea that it is through individuals doing things themselves that success is going to come through is absolutely mistaken. I can therefore talk about a particular opportunity that I personally um, become connected uh, with. This is an, an opportunity for leadership development in South Africa. It's linked uh, to, 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 to Germany. It was offered um, by the German Chancellor on a visit 
to South Africa, the official visit to South Africa, to support young leadership development in South Africa. This program you can access uh, information about by going into that website. And I am one of the um, uh, um, ambassadors, it's a volunteer role uh, for the, the foundation. It's called the Alexandra von Humboldt Foundation. And I am, I am also a member of the selection committee that considers applications from South African young uh, uh, leaders um, who may be interested in pursuing projects and connecting uh, their interests to, 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 to German um, institutions, taking a year off to study there. Um, when dealing with how these opportunities can be tapped. I, I've, I've painted a landscape of a wide expanse of opportunity. How do you tap on these though? How do you make sense of this world of work? You're coming out from a school which is a mainstream uh, a, a school um, and then you never had the experience of creating direct relationships with um, your, your educators, but this is what you will start needing in order to be able to tap on resources, even at university, to start understanding who and where your sources of support are. Whether you are working at a cafeteria, start understanding that opportunity of working at the cafeteria at the, at, the, at the university or wherever it is located as an opportunity for you to be building the networks that you will actually need to move you forward in your uh, trajectory um, of building a, a, a career in the field of, of, of law. Connecting with your uh, professors, your teachers um, at university is critically important but you need to have the confidence and the attitude that recognizes your value and says you actually belong there. You actually have the right to be communicating with those people who are sort of um, a peer, uh, uh, figures of power and superiority um, in, in, in the environment and tapping from them the necessary uh, knowledge, resource, awareness, and even being known uh, to, to, to them because that, those networks serve an amazingly important function of guiding, of promoting you, of enabling you to see new spaces that you would not even have been exposed to. Everybody needs a leg up. It is myth that people arrive at places of admirable uh, success because they are uniquely gifted and one in a million. It's, it is a myth. Everybody moves forward because they are supported in some way, given a leg, leg up in some way by a person, a social organization, a community, a way of thinking, and so brace yourself for that. Open yourself up for tapping on that, gaining that connection um, uh, to, to, to people. I, I just wanted to share a very brief story of a young man that I got introduced to in 2019. He had been expelled from the LLB at the University of Pretoria uh, because of his fees must fall uh, activities participating in, in, in that. He could not um, get back uh, to university. He was already doing the L LLB and he ended up sitting out a full year and a bit. And in that period, I sort of became somebody who walks with him, doing counseling slash mentoring uh, 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 roles with him, uh, keeping him hopeful he comes from a very, very, very um, uh, poor background in Limpopo. 
um, with a grandmother supporting the, he, him, him and the, the, the sister uh, through a grant, a social uh, a security grant, and he just had no means of, li of, 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 of um, livelihood in that period. But he set out the years, he came back to university. Today, the young man, through all those struggles, the young man is serving articles. He has fought through and sustained resilience such that he is serving altitude, uh, uh, um, uh, articles uh, to, today. My role in him uh, getting the minuscule, it, is, it was just about bringing up that hope, shining the light, sharing the 250 here and there, which enables him to buy some food from time to time. And so these are some of the traits that we need to develop then in ourselves. The ability to build up our res resilience, the ability to build an attitude that says it does not matter where I come from. It does not matter what I have experienced. It does not matter what mistakes I have made. What I do know is that I do have a purpose, I do have a goal, and I'm going to build the strengths in me because I am somebody to actually use that and the people around me who can support me to get to my goal. So that, those are some of the, of, of the big traits that a lawyer, a successful lawyer requires. You may have been informed that the law is a field of huge macho um, behavior, huge arrogance, but you don't need to be there. These are some of the things that cause a lot of pain and unhappiness and disconnect of people from who they are and result in people being successful maybe from a material point of view, but being completely devastated from a meaning of life uh, point of view. I do not have much time left in this uh, conversation, but it is important to understand that we bring ourselves into everything that we do. Our careers are a part of our gifting of life. And so when we choose to go into the field of law and to practice there, we cannot be erased by the toxic nature of the environment traditionally. We, are, we have the full power to define the parameters. We have the full power to raise voice and be ourselves. I started off with a prayer. And that's not something that you'll normally find in a master class. And so when you go out, young people, and you go out to make your mark, remember that there are things that resonate with your being. The land, the environment and our contribution to the sustainability of our environment, that's part of your contribution. Do you want to do the law in that field, go ahead. You will gain support. Feminist principles, key part of the dismantling of power abuse and the discord in power dynamics. So with those words, I just do want to encourage everybody to make sure that we fully understand ourselves, what we are moved by and what seems to be our purpose. And we use that to drive us to then make the connections in the areas that will lead us to clear paths in our fields. Being a generalist is very important. It gives you the base for you to succeed then when you start specializing in whatever field of law that you choose then to, 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 to live out your career in. 
So may, may, life, may life be clear for you. May you understand that you have every opportunity to focus on the talents, the gifts that you are, and to move towards building your career in the field of law, bringing forward that attitude of understanding that you can fail, but you will eventually use those failures as your success pillars. Thank you. For more informative videos, visit www.empoweryouth.co.za.